Hello, brethren, and once again, let me thank you for your aid, for your prayers, and your encouragement from my trips to India. I'm going to let this just go for about uh, the first couple of minutes, and I'll come back in and visit with you a little bit about some of the still photos I put in here uh, to tell you more about what is going on with the work in India. The next few pictures that you're going to be seeing are pictures of some of the church buildings and some of the homes of some of the preachers. I felt it beneficial this year to do this as this is something I really haven't dug into into the past. I have shown uh, some of the church buildings. As you can see, there's a variety of different structures there. Uh, the one place with the gated community, that was a place we were able to help uh, leave some funds to help purchase that property uh, for later on for a congregation there in Gunadella area to actually be able to uh, hopefully build a building in that area uh, in the future. You can see that most of the homes that the preachers have are maybe two or three rooms at most. Uh, they'll have a small uh, bedroom, maybe two small bedrooms. If you notice the young boy was leaning up against the wall on a cot, well that is a bed. And quite often during the day, the cots are taken outside uh, so they can set up a table so they can eat uh, in inside the houses. And so they're very small houses. Uh, most have some type of propane that they use in the kitchen in order to do some cooking. Here is a property that was finally able to start building some buildings for the lepers to live in there in the Tonicu area. Some co congregation in Minnesota had given funds um, a few years back and we finally able to see the fruit of that funds taking place in the Tonicu area. Again, you can see many different varieties of buildings. Some are looked almost brand new, which they are. And again, that's because of things that you've helped us with in the past to leave funds for the brethren so they could help buy property and then to build on top of those properties. Here you're, again, you're seeing one of the preacher's homes that we were able to go into this year. And uh, I always ask the wife if it's okay if I recorded uh, some of the video and, and they're more than happy to let us come in and see what they have. And you can see they have a little bit uh, of shelving units on the walls to help uh, with their food items and, and their clothing items. Um, pretty much going to be one of those things where you, you see a refrigerator, a small dorm size refrigerator every once in a while, but nothing elaborate. Uh, definitely no air conditioning, no heating as such. Uh, they don't have those things available uh, to them and wouldn't uh, probably use use them if they did have them. Uh, this is uh, again something that we just take for granted. We always 
especially in the Midwest, we think we've got to have heating, we have to have air conditioning, and uh, sometimes their windows are just a hole in the wall, or their door might be just a hole in the wall. Uh, some have updated and have actually put in wooden uh, doors and, for the doors, and have also uh, put in some uh, windows as such, but the windows most of the time are not glass windows. They would be bars and then some wooden shutters for that. That uh, picture of those two young girls, the one had just uh, a few years ago had had heart bypass surgery, and so we were thankful to get to see her again and see that she is gaining her health back. Uh, she had become a Christian about three or four years ago, and it's good to see her back and, and well. Again, you can see the ladies have a, a small space to work with, with the with the kitchen area, and uh, I always tell everybody, most of the time I don't want to go back in there uh, into the kitchen while they are preparing the food uh, for us and for the rest of the brethren. Uh, I just don't know what's going to be ending up in our food. This young girl I've known ever since I first took my trip over there, uh, and uh, she is now a widow, left alone with two small children. We were able to leave some aid with, with her. Uh, she has uh, no income, of course, other than she, her in-laws are helping her a little bit to take care of the children. These are two young children I've known since, again, my first trips over. Uh, many wonderful people and many wonderful remembrances that I have from India. And we appreciate it, again, because without you, we could not do this. In Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, it says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Brethren, indeed, I am thankful for the fellowship we've had and hopefully will continue to have. It seems almost impossible that this year's trip to India has come and gone. I was making plans for the trip. Now I have returned. It was truly a joy to be able to work with Dudley Morton for a second year. His insight and his encouragement is most beneficial. The brethren in India truly appreciate his work also. This year was one of many trials, but we were able to overcome them all. It all started in Denver, where our flight was delayed. And when we were given an alternate flight, unfortunately, neither Dudley nor I noticed that we would be on separate flights once we got to India. Fortunately, we noticed prior to Dudley's plane taking off, and with mass communications, we were able to let our brothers, S. Karaniti and GDVK Prasad, know of the change, but not before they had waited for our original flight for over 12 hours at the airport there in Madras. And lest I forget, without our two brethren doing translation work, the work would be almost impossible. We did have a third translator this year, and Manny Anand, who also was invaluable to us. Our fourth aide is Jay Raju, and who uh, helps tremendously with scheduling of the meetings in his area. Well, once we were in country, we found uh, out that our luggage was not with us. Dudley showed up first, and we had it shipped to Vijuata, and it was about three days before he got his. One of mine followed a couple of days later, and uh, the last one about a week late. When we got to the AP State, we worked separately for most of the first week. Dudley and Karan and Edie worked in the Vijuata area. GDVK Prasad and I traveled daily to the Nandigama area to work with Manny Anand. Now, I had known Manny for 12 years or more. I had held preacher meetings in the area, but this was our first effort in holding gospel meetings together other than in Nandigama. This year we added one week to our schedule so that we would have more time for meetings and working with the brethren. The time and country meant we had many gospel meetings, meetings with preachers on the five acts of worship, meetings with denominational preachers to teach them the difference between the Lord's Church and their denomination, and hopefully the word was planted. We also had the opportunity to record three television programs. I believe Dudley and I worked 31 meetings together. And in addition, Dudley spoke 16 other times while I had 12 other meetings. And on top of this, we also had the meetings with the preachers and their wives on the five acts and avenues of worship in four different places, plus the meetings that I had with the denominational preachers there in Nandigama. We were both worn out, but enjoyed the opportunities that were presented to us. We had the opportunity to see 129 souls added to the Lord's kingdom during this work, and additionally we saw four preachers rebaptized as they realized they had not been baptized for the right reason. Now this is a 
program that's been going on in Tonicu for the last three to four years where they've been have preachers training after they're out there already preaching. And these brethren are going through four days of meetings uh, and study, uh, long days of meetings. And uh, these brethren found out that they had not been baptized for the correct reason and were rebaptized while we were there. We want to remind you, as you, I'm sure you know, that the, the fields are still ripe in the harvest in India, and I pray that we do not lose sight of this. And indeed, we do take advantage of the work that is there. As most of you know, a few things have changed for me personally and my family this past year. For one, I retired from the USPS. I then asked the elders at 39th Street Church of Christ in Independence, Missouri to oversee my mission work, which they agreed to. And I hope to make additional trips soon. In fact, I will be going to Mexico with Wayne Brewer on March 18th for a week of work. I also have plans to go to Kenya later in the year for evangelistic work there. And if you would like to help in these efforts, please let me know. I'm also considering a second trip to India, but have not committed as to a date as yet. And again, none of this could take place without your aid and your prayers. What you saw just a few moments ago mainly was church buildings and houses of brethren. And what they have to call a house what they have to call a church building. And of course, not everyone has the same or has more. Some have more, some have less, as needless to say. But I just uh, wanted to give you kind of a quick view of uh, what they are going through. You know, they're not living uh, high on the hog or anything like this. And so the brethren are, are very benefited by the help and aid that we're able to do. Once in a while, we're helping um, aid some preachers over there that. Uh, uh, are working full-time and uh, don't have any other income other than the source of their, their work and then working for two or three at the congregations and putting in that time also and so we help them on a one-time gift basis we were able to uh, help build some baptistries again this year we were able to help buy some property we also aided in a couple of brethren who were in dire need for medical aid in the area helping widows, helping orphans, helping lepers again. It's an ongoing basis, and we're so thankful that we have this opportunity. And, of course, we wouldn't have that opportunity if it wasn't for brethren like you, because without your uh, financial aid, along with your prayers, it would be next to impossible to, uh, to do this work, needless to say, also in helping get the tickets for to go overseas, uh, take care of the... Uh, the funds that are needed while we're in country and all of this information. What you see right now, this is Manny Annan and as I said this was probably our first meeting uh, in country if I recall I'm looking at and this was a meeting that kind of reminded me of Gilligan's Island because Manny, I asked Manny, I said how long should this trip take us to get to this area? He said oh three hours tops. Well that's a long day to begin with. Well, six hours later, we finally did arrive, and we had had two meetings scheduled for that day, but because of running behind time, uh, we had to scratch one of the meetings uh, for the evening meeting, uh, because by the time it was over, we had another six-hour journey going back to uh, the Vijuata area, back to Gunadella, where we are, were actually staying uh, while we were in the Vijuata area. And so it made for a long day, a short night, long, wearisome. But this is something that uh, we were able to do. Uh, Dudley and I, again, we split up the first week. And I went over to Nandigama most of that week uh, by myself, along with GDVK Prasad, of course, and our driver, Adi. And we went there every morning. And it's about an hour drive away from where we were staying so that we could work with Manny and, and his, his dad and other members of the congregation. Um, they were able to set up the meetings for us, and we're very thankful for that. And as I said, Manny was also able to do some of the translation work, which is very good. It helps out the other brethren, helps out GDVK Prasad, and helps out Eskaran and Edie so that they don't have to do all of the translating. So that third person is definitely was beneficial to our help, and we look forward to being able to work with Manny um, again in the future. Uh, as I said, Manny and I have known each other for a number of years, uh, from almost the time that I started going over to India, and uh, really have gotten to know each other uh, much better in the last uh, two to three years. 
and so we're, we're thankful for the opportunity to that has been presented to us to work in a brand new area you know that's one of the things that some brethren say well you go back to the same area same area same area well yes we do because we remember even in the one state that we do most of our work in there are millions of people in that area that we could go every almost every day and be able to speak to new people in different meetings and so we're thankful we do have that opportunity of course know the preachers we've worked with for years but it's also good to get to know other brethren to, to be able to work with them and talk with them and discuss the work and the needs of, of India it was very beneficial to me anyway when we were able to visit with the preachers and, and a lot of their wives who were able to come to the meetings on the the rest of the actual video runs about 45 minutes for video and then I've got uh, still folders after that and so if you want to take a look at those I was run another 10 to 15 minutes I suppose of, of, of the still photos that I took while in India also again I want to thank each and every one of you for your aid in the past as you've helped me for so many years uh, many since uh, 1995 have helped with this work and pray that you continue to consider us and your your giving to help in the work in India help in Mexico help in Kenya and other places that I have the opportunities to go and preach the Word of God it has been truly a blessing to be having this fellowship with you and pray that it will continue uh, should you have any other questions you uh, should be able to know how to get a hold of me at email you can get a hold of me at email with uh, john at churchofchrist.us uh, you can call me at 308-240-4622 or of course you can contact the elders at 39th street in independence missouri if you'd like to know more of, of the things that are going on uh, through the work also again thank you so much and i hope you enjoy the rest of the video as you uh, see the work that you've been a part of in 2013 in india చాలా సందర్భాల్లో మరి మేము ఆగవలసి వస్తా ఉన్నది దారి ఏదో కనుక్కోవలసి వస్తా ఉన్నది అయితే మాకు మంచి డ్రైవర్లు ఉండటం జరిగింది ఆ విధంగా మరి మంచి మార్గం చూపించేటటువంటి వారు కూడా ఉండటం వల్ల మేము సరైనటువంటి మార్గములు ప్రయాణం చేయగలుగుతున్నాం వెళ్ళినప్పుడు వారి టీచర్స్ ద్వారా వారికి సరైనటువంటి మరి దారి చూపేటటువంటి పరిస్థితి అవసరం అలాగే వారి జీవితాన్ని కొనసాగిస్తూ ఉండగా వారి జీవిత యాత్రలో వారికి మార్గము చూపేటటువంటి పరిస్థితి అవసరం అది స్నేహితుల దగ్గర నుంచి కావచ్చు పొరుగు వారి నుంచి కావచ్చు అదే కొన్ని సందర్భాల్లో మార్గము చూపేసే చూపించేటటువంటి